begin our technical session 7 here i welcome the presenters and the chairperson dr shubhasini and other uh, chairpersons who are those who have joined in this uh, wonderful session i welcome you all once again let us have a small intro about our chairperson of uh, technical session 7 dr shubhashini i invite murthala to introduce our uh, chairperson good morning everyone it is a great honor for me to introduce the chairperson of today's first session dr m subhashini associate professor department of english sri saraswati tyagaraja college bullachi she have more than 15 years of teaching experience being a research supervisor, currently she is guiding six research scholars. She had published six papers in reputed international journals and attended numerous faculty development trainings. She was also the part of various national and international conferences and organized numerous guest lectures. She is one of the members of the professional body English Language Teachers Association of India and have established a digital language laboratory in STC to improve the students' language efficiency. She is currently acting as a public relationship officer and soft skills trainer. Ma'am, you can take over the session, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mithila. Uh, thank you, Mahabam. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Am I audible? Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Okay, thank you. Oh, good morning, all. So it's, uh, I'm very much uh, privileged and a pleasure for being a chairperson to this technical session too. At this juncture, uh, I really thank Mahamam Hachudi, Department of English, and Dilavati Ma'am, Principal, for giving me such a wonderful platform for me. So actually, uh, we had been discussing several decades about this uh, subaltern uh, studies, and um, I really uh, feel happy uh, that is uh, Mahamam have uh, taken such a um, uh, great uh, topic. Uh, but still we are experiencing we are uh, sensitizing so many issues related to all those uh, marginalized people but um, uh, several discussions and several uh, debates uh, we have been undergone and we come across with uh, so many criticism and debates regarding this area of field but still we are experiencing many identity related issues uh, uh, still it's prevailing around us but scholars like us and uh, like you argued to reclaim those uh, history and to retake them uh, uh, we are uh, so many scholars and crit uh, criti critics they have argued they are ready to appraise their um, identity crisis but uh, still we couldn't uh, get a good uh, a positive report on the a side but actually uh, they have no platform to express their concerns and no voice to demand a, a fairer share of society's goods actually um, uh, uh, at this uh, time, that is, uh, Dalit literature is a much needed outburst of an exploited people uh, who have been robbed of their identity. So I feel this is the right platform to explore all those identity crises in this uh, area, I, uh, I believe. So I uh, heartfully, uh, uh, what to say, I congratulate all the participants and presenters uh, to do justice to this area. All the best. Thank you. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. You can proceed with the first presenter, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I, I, first presenter. One second. Baiju, uh, Shiva Shankari, I believe. Shiva Shankari, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Shiva Shankari. Yeah, you can proceed uh, now. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Is my screen visible to you? 
visible ka na visible okay thank you ma'am ma'am should i on the video yes you can you can Good morning, one and all present here. Uh, my name is Sashivan Shankari. Uh, I am from Erod. I am currently studying my first MA English Literature at Congo Arts and Science College. My title is. Uh, Dalit feminism in the poem of uh, Meena Kandasamy and Aruna uh, Bulbul Manda. Uh, now I'm going to uh, say about uh, Dalit feminism. It is about a female uh, perspective, and it deals with how low caste women community are suffering and uh, uh, faces the problem. Uh, first, the Dalit word uh, uh, appeared in Marathi in 1930s uh, as depressed uh, depressed classes. Uh, later it uh, translated in english as dalit uh, now uh, i have taken the works of uh, one night by meena kandasamy and the uh, dalit woman in the land of goddesses by aruna bulgul manda uh, uh, meena kandasamy uh, she is an indian poet uh, fiction writer translator uh, she writes uh, columns for hindu uh, next Aruna uh, Aruna is an uh, is a Telugu English poet uh, she is one of the famous five dalit uh, she is one of the five dalit english poets she was uh, she is an famous uh, english poet writer and her themes uh, she wrote under uh, she wrote uh, themes such as like uh, gender and caste and she is also a bilingual poet uh, caste system in india um, uh um uh the dalit uh, uh the 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 one at the uh foot of the brahma um and then feminism and dalit uh, feminism is a political movement uh, whereas we when we compare to feminism dalit women faces uh, more suffers than the fem 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 uh, feminist uh, feminine women mm. problems of dalit feminism uh, the oppression faced by the dalits more than the 300 years ago they faces uh, uh, poverty suffering um, domestic violence uh, brutality and then they were dominated by the high class people um, uh, the uh, Uh, the poems uh, one night and the uh, dalit women in the land of uh, goddesses uh, uh, reveals the suffering and the pain of the dalit women uh, meena kandasamy's poem one night shows how dalit girl neglected by the society uh, even the pot and uh, uh, pot and uh, glass uh, uh, thirst the uh, sees an eager and thirst of the danam a dalit girl but the society the teacher even the edu educated teacher press full neglected her because she belongs to a low caste dalit woman so she was neglected by the society um next uh, a dalit woman the land of goddess by aruna uh, this reveals the present scenario of the dalit woman in the society um in this poem uh, aruna portrays the dalit as a goddess uh, the dalit women uh, can't uh, achieve their dreams as uh, uh, 
they are uh, uh, dominated by the high class people and uh, they are uh, lives in the fear of the society um comparing this to novels the uh, poets uh, try to uh, uphold the uh, marginalized women uh, uh, in these two poems reveals the women's rendered voiceless and suppression of society um so dalit women are suffering silently and faces many problems in the society uh, both poets motto is to uplift the dalit women community uh, and then aruna's works uh, uh, towards the upliftment of the marginalized women uh, so there is no exact solution for their upliftment uh, uh so uh, education and uh, equality uh, bring some homes for dalit women community uh, so people want to change their mind and want to give respect and education uh, equality to them uh, though the indian constitution abol- abolishes untouchability even the dalit remain same uh, in the reality uh, they are suffering more other than the feminism or other women in the world um so uh people uh, want to change their mind and want to give respect and education to them uh thank you uh, this two poem shows the dalit women suffering uh and pain uh hello shiv shankari ma'am i uh, yeah it was a good presentation thank so, you ma'am uh, question for you who's uh, mina kandasamy's favorite poet can you say ma'am ma'am re- uh, repeat uh, one more time ma'am who's the favorite poet of mina kandasamy i um, Mom, don't know, Mom. <laughs> It's okay. So Sylvia Plath, actually. Okay. So is she a really diasporic writer? Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. She is a genuine diasporic writer. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Mom. Okay. This is my first time. I'm a little bit nervous, okay, okay, confused. Okay. <laughs> okay. No issues. No issues. It's actually a good experience for you. good platform to to enhance yourself okay okay ma'am don't get now okay okay ma'am okay any other questions participants are you there do you want to question her hello okay shall we move on to the next participant is she ready yes ma'am by you thomas ah oh, yes yes i am ready yeah okay okay so you can continue Good morning to all of you. Uh, my topic is a critical analysis on Dalit feminism literature, a pattern, paradigm shift from oppression to liberation. Myself, Father Bhaiji, I am a research scholar in Ramakrishna Mission Vivekananda Educational Research Institute, Faculty of Disability Management and Special Education, Vidyalaya Campus, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. impression the phrase dalit feminism perspective designed a collection of information that includes first person account of the struggle faced by disadvantaged women who live inside more visibly established social structure dalit women in india have been silent for a long time 
they have hopelessly witnessed their exploitation, mistreatment, and violence. They are helpless over their own lives, finance, or bodies. They are instead under the control of someone else. Their severe exploitation, brutality, and oppression include rape, illiteracy, poor health, unemployment, insecurity, and inhuman treatment. They have suffered from hunger, famine, illness, physical and mental torture, and other conditions. Their lives have become a nightmare due to the caste and the patriarchal work together. The Dalit movement started in the middle of the 19th century to help many of the sun privileged people. Still, oppressive Dalit movement and mainstream feminism literature have not addressed Dalit women's issue. As women work to curb out a place for themselves, they must also fight the unfairness and basis perpetrated uh, against them. After Ambedkar, Dalit women used literature as a weapon to criticize mainstream feminism. Autographs, autobiographies, papers, books, flash fiction, and poem fit this genre. The meaning of the term Dalit. Dalit are the modern name for sutras. The term Dalit refers to several disadvantaged people. In, in Hindi, it is, means ground. The, the words Dalit and Dalita means oppression, have a common etymological and settled in the Sanskrit. The term Sudra or Dalit used to refer the person who perform manual work and rare feats to benefit the three classes of Brahmin, Kshatri, and Vaisva in the social culture of India. Mahatma Gandhi called the Sudras Hirijans or people of God. Dalits are the lowest caste in India. Their na name originates from the Sanskrit word for broken or scattered. The very act attempting to a translation from the classical Sanskrit conjoins up the thoughts of brokenness. Someone who does not identify with one of the Hindu Hindus four primary castes called the outcast or term first used in the 18th century. The condition of Dalit women in India. Uh, sorry to disturb you, Mr. Baiju. Your slide is not changing. Changing, madam. Not changing. Yes, yes, it's in the first page. Then some problem. I will once more. I will start. Now you can see, ma. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Now it's okay, now. Yes, yeah. you can continue. The condition of the little women in India. The gender, the gender gap is a major issue in India. Feminism yes, in India yes. face limited opportunity and disadvantaged countries traditional gender rules. Women in India culture have traditionally been tasked with the care for the home and children. This meant that a set of procedures were put on hold and people would go to the broke work or school as usual. Before India's independence, it was unlawful for women to own property. Women profited from this up this pro approach in many ways, including their personal lives and academic performance and leadership rules. With the seven decades of freedom, India's caste system and gender inequality continue to generate concern. <clears throat> Dalit women's fight for justice. Dalit women in India face terrible poverty, constant verbal and physical assault, and social exclusion. Feminist scholar Jail Omert claims that women in India's Dalit community face discrimination since they are Dalit among Dalit. As per Dr. Ambedkar, Hindu society caste system is like a pyramid made of clay jars. Dalit women in India have learned to hide their caste and ethnicity due to the decades of discrimination. Compared to the rest of India's female population, Dalit women have unique challenges. They have been denied every basic human right, including living with respect and dignity and practicing their faith freely. They are compelled to engage with the wide world due to their desperate financial situation and urgent need to care for themselves. They did not 
they did little as their people were oppressed, persecuted, and left to revolt or savagery. They are no longer in the charge of their lives and have no say over their bodies or property. Hunger, malnutrition, disease, suffering in body and mind, rape, in the ignorance, poor health, unemployment, insecurity, and cruel treatment are full forms of violence and exploit and injustice. Injustice. Dalit feminist movement in India. Women in Dalit community should be seen as subject rather than object because they play a vital role in the well being of the families and communities. Before the 90s, when Dalit feminists began, there were all, already Dalit women's group and border participation in various political activities across India. At the turn of 2000, there was a rise in the cyber feminism among Dalit. Bahuj, Bahujan, the authors of the publication represented a coalition of feminists who support the political struggle of Dalit Bahujan. This is becoming more common for Adivasi women to express their task on Dalit feminist perspective. Women of lower socioeconomic status make up the majority of Bahujan feminist group. While women in the Dalit community need to speak or how together people of both sexes, Dalit and non Dalits, have already done so. The Dalit feminist movement has benef benefited greatly from the connection with the Savarna feminist movement. They support the consecutive worldwide that typically give more weight to the needs of Dalit women and those of women from dominant caste. Dalit feminist critic of the term woman has generated a demand for the new vocabulary to describe feminist politics in India. Women's role in Dalit literature. Dalit literature refers to writing that focused on the oppression of the Dalit people. Any Dalit or a Norton might have written this. However, the works of others who have not themselves, Dalits not considered Dalit literature by the Dalit community. During the Sudras, Smriti period about 500 to 30 BCs, when women were treated quite harshly, the lawgiver Manu established his court. However, most Dalit writings celebrate the motherhood and relegate women to secondary roles, stereotypically reflecting a patriarchal view of the women. For the same reason, Dalit politics do not prioritize private prioritizing promoting women equality. One of the main purpose of Dalit writing is to raise attention to the oppression, injustice, of hopelessness, and hardship they face. A group of Dalit women are authorized to educate, educate, organize in the response to ideas of Dr. Uh, Ambekar. Dalit women are depicted in two India's most well-known epics, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana. Women in Dalit literature any discussion on Dalit, Dalitism is likely to be incomplete unless we take into the consideration of a strong un, un, undercurrent of Dalits, women, and their uh, incomplete. We take into the consideration of a strong understanding of women and the predicate a unique stream under the entire entire domain a paradigm shift from oppression to liberation women in, women of the dalit caste in india experience double discrimination due to the globalization the government has promised to address social isolation and discrimination concern but this problem remains however a small but outspoken dalit community aware of this right began to rise in India in the early 20th century, partially due to the effort of Dr. Ambekar. Women from the Dalit community are aware of the widespread cons concerns between upper caste and the feminists of, and the Dalit men. The Dalit women autographies what written talks about the, the society for and not for personal spirit. Women of the Dalit community highlight the most important concern facing their people from the perspective of their identities and the forms of oppression they face. Split in the Dalit liberation group may we have resulted from the disagreements of a strategy and leadership and cooperation. 
grassroots group continue to mobilize around the problem like racism and discrimination in the employment and in just and the justice system as well as a concern like identity politics politics educating housing and immigration it appears that the priority of safeguarding individual right rather than maintaining the paradigm shift from oppression to liberation conclusion this is the issue might be concerned by looking how the modern feminism originated originated among indian women there have been increased call for the discriminating sex laws since they are minority groups notably mm, notably dalit women have seen the economic development lag behind the the general population it is commonly held that all the indian citizens have certain legal protections the outcome of this study lends lent credence to the claims that dalit women experience discrimination in the workplace and education opportunities that their human development indicators improve at a slower rate than those of the dalit men or non dalit men or women and they are responsible for the vast majority of the productive work when designating the most effective and positive form of political participation by dalit and non dalit women and men it is essential to have a thorough understanding of the historical struggle limitation com complexities of the dalit women lo location within a range of accumulative layer based technology feminist movement among formerly oppressed group can serve as a useful check on power in the in this area is the dalit movement movement men we may learn more about the feminist movement and dalit organization by comparing their fight for a paradigm change from the oppression to liberation thank you thank you for giving me a chance to present my paper thank you madam hello oh yes you uh, thank you byju thomas thank you thank you very much see here uh, it is not actually a question hmm. um, the one thing uh, though this era has been declared that there is no feminism right eh? this era hmm. this era this era ah, yes, it's yes. already it has been declared that there is no feminism okay okay are you accepting this uh, not fully i am accepting <laughs> <laughs> yeah still but still we are experiencing uh, yes. that is sustainability of suppression ah, around yes, suppression us right is there. suppression is there. yeah suppression is still it's prevailing mm. right uh, mm. even yesterday i can see that i can witness uh, that in the media too because mm. uh, while uh, showcasing uh, females those are getting good uh, positions or uh, what to say uh, mm. they are uh, exhibiting like in such a manner they are emphasizing it highly mm. and also uh, men who are uh, taking the charge of uh, cooking uh, like uh, domestic works that is mm. also they are emphasizing high in media okay. so it shows uh, even the media itself showcasing that a, a female are mm. uh, subordinate right so in yes. this world uh, dalit people they are already marginalized right among us yes yes among those dalit people dalit women are very poorer to reach their society uh, societal status inside their community too yes yes ah uh, yes yes so these are all the uh, acceptance of which we are experiencing which we are seeing around us so can mm. you give few recommendations or suggestions in policy making uh we can give uh, because we are to involve uh, like ambekar ambekar has uh, given lot of Uh, his uh, books and all is given lot of notes on women, especially he worked for the uh, empowerment of Dalit women, Dalit people mostly. Okay. So we okay. should give uh, opportunity to all. Should not uh, we have to first of all we have to abolish the caste system. That uh, mm. we should uh, uh, abolish one thing. But we cannot do it to the pop uh, because a lot of problem will be there. in the already we are we are born and brought up in that structure it is not a very difficult to abolish in a uh, in a straight way but uh, we can accept the people the mm -hmm. people and we should to work for them we should involve them in the uh, in the policies like uh, when we the government uh, bring a new policies for the women or any people 
we should also give a, uh, a good um, more important to the women uh, women group especially this uh, uh, dalit people we should give some uh, new projects for them to bring them to the mainstream of the society we should uh, also put and also education field also we should give a uh, more important uh, in the areas where the dalit people are staying we should uh, uh, government should uh, provide some uh, good colleges or schools for that we can bring them because only through education only when we educate uh, a woman all family will be educated so we mm -hmm. should educate the women and uh, then only we can bring the uh, uh, bring a new society where all the people will be uh, equally accepted and equal uh, opportunities they will be getting Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, participants? Do you have any other questions? Uh, Ma'am, I'm Babita uh, from Kerala. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not a question, uh, but I'm saying that uh, whatever policies we make, whatever the government uh, make rules uh, for the protection of women and Dalits, uh, caste still, still exists in the minds of the people. Uh, it mm. is, exists as an invisible thing everywhere. Uh, uh, that is what I, I, I want to say. That it's not that much easy for us to abolish it. Uh -uh. As it is invisible uh, and it exists we do. It exists in the minds of the people. Mm. Uh, yeah, as uh, Frost says, miles to go. Right. Yes, yes, yes. I but also I agree know. to that. Yes, yes. Yeah. But we are initiating, we are taking steps yes. towards equality. Yes. But it's already inculcated in our minds. It is mm. incorporated. It's designed. It's mm. already designed. So yes. it will take generations to overcome. Ah, yes, well, we can see some uh, some of the facts uh, also no? in the society also we can see women are coming up uh, in the coming, world. Yeah, coming forward. There. Yeah, last uh, even last month we have uh, submitted a project uh, to ICSSR related to Dalit literature only. Mm. Uh, in there, uh, but uh, we have witnessed so many people. They have started uh, even uh, more more uh, female. They have started self help groups and mm. uh, through self help uh, groups they have initiated so many education policies and they have started uh, giving education to their community itself. Mm. So yes, any sir. policy they have changed even in their uh, health ways. Uh, education wise many uh, their mindsets are slowly they are uh, it's changing so maybe in another uh, 10 or 15 years they will also come forward they will also mingle with us definitely yes, yes. Um, but we are take we are initiating it let us see mm. so hope. Uh, hope yeah hope. it's a hope thank you okay, thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Next participant. Uh, Hi, good morning. Ah, uh, uh, Am I audible? Am I uh, audible? Yeah. You're audible, audible, audible. Yeah, Honorable Madam uh, Malakshmi and uh, the Madam Dr. Subhashini chair in this session. Uh, should I start my presentation, ma'am? Yes, of course. Yeah. So I'm really grateful to provide such a wonderful platform to all these research scholars as we were just discussing yesterday also in these technical sessions I was there and listening to a number of these scholars it was really wonderful uh, is my screen visible man is my screen visible to you no oh. sir no not at all not at all Okay. Yeah, no, it's visible. Visible, visible. visible? Okay. okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I hope it's visible. Is it, man? Is it? Yes, sir. Yes, it's yeah, visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the title of my paper is Dalit Writings, uh, Voices of Voiceless, and I'm Sanjay Kumar, PhD research scholar from Department of English, Desh Bhagat University, Mandi Gobindgarh, Punjab. And uh, previously, I was a student of Himachal Pradesh University. I'm very happy uh, to have this opportunity. Uh, I wanted to know, Madam, see, this is a 
question of my actually i do have the curiosity that number number of uh, numerous participants uh, taking part in this uh, international conference and uh, based on spartan studies still uh, that uh, i uh, my mind was uh, again and again asking me a question that uh, how many research scholars can be there who themselves belong to some such kind of category uh, as a uh, number of uh, these dalit writers uh, you may feel whenever you are reading them that the true feel that the pain of that Dalit writings can be realized by a person who himself or herself belong to that particular category. I hope uh, uh, if others are listening to me, they will agree with me. Uh, do you, ma'am? Say uh, yes. Yeah. See, uh, my research paper is a part of my PhD research thesis titled as Narratives of Dalit, Dalit Autobiographies and Their Contribution in Dalit Consciousness, a comparative study of selected Punjabi, Hindi, and Marathi Dalit autobiographies based on primary text, Juthan, that is written by Om Prakash Palmiki originally in Hindi, and secondly, Changi Aruk, Against the Night, originally written by uh, written in Punjabi by Balbir Madhopuri and another one is Dastan written by Lal Singh Dil, a Punjabi writer and another one is Outcast, a memoir by Narendra Jadhav. After reading these uh, four autobiographies, I feel, see, if myself, I do belong a community of uh, like, uh, let's say, Om Prakash Valmiki or somebody else, it's, we are talking about these Dalit autobiographies are the voices of voiceless. And secondly, it's covering as a part of that Dalit autobiographies are playing their role in Dalit consciousness. So you people will believe me, see, when you read these autobiographies, you feel that something is happening inside you that you are not reading that autobiography of Om Prakash Valmiki, let's say, Balbir Madhavri. You feel somebody is telling you the life story of your life. Uh, I may not be contemporary to them they lived uh, decades back to me but still you can see uh, i'm not talking about punjab or maharashtra or some other states i'm from himachal pradesh and basically from shimla but uh, i'm very much sure these caste discriminations still prevailing all over all over the situations somehow are similar in every place so Quickly, I'm talking about the abstract of my paper. The research paper aimed at, aims at highlighting the treatment given to Dalits in the Hindu caste-dominated society. The term Dalit is synonymous to poor, exploited, oppressed, and humiliated and marginalized, known as untouchables and downtrodden in the society. The reason for all that is long prevailing caste system in the society. Caste is the driving force of Hindu social system and one's birth in the particular caste is his or her true virtue that I have realized after reading these number of number of Dalit writings and autobiographies as part of my research work. Birth is one's true identity. Your place in the society is decided on the basis of your caste. The place is accessible to you depend on your caste. Your work and profession is predetermined by the basis of your caste, 101% in short. I must say caste is the most powerful weapon used by human beings to exploit another human being. May, it may be my personal opinion, may not be everybody agree with me. Whichsoever the Dalit writing may it be Lal Singh Dil's uh, poetry, his uh, some other uh, narratives of a part of his autobiography. I may be talking about Om Prakash Valmiki's has titled his uh, autobiography as Juton, you once read it when he's saying that standing with his mother at the outside of these high caste people on the occasion of some marriage when these people or the guests, they finish their food and throwing these Jutans in their basket. Even then, they are chasing them away. And I, I can't even use such words they are using for them. And uh, the, such kind of treatment and atrocities and humiliations are given to them is really unbelievable. Trust me, if you belong to some such kind of a community, it may not be happening in your locality, but still you will feel that something is happening inside you and you wanted to do something for that. Moving ahead, Dalit writings and Dalit literature is a literature of personally lived experience by Dalits. I may be talking about uh, Narendra Jadhav, Banbir Madhapuri, Om Prakash Valmiki, or uh, Lal Singh Dil. 
these are their real life experiences these are not uh, just uh, imaginary stories or some other kinds of works these dalit writings are based on individual experience of dalit authors but on the other hand these writings are presenting their entire community as a whole and uh, dalit writings are the tools to bring forth the unheard voices of marginalized and uh, deprived communities known as dalits if i'm talking about these dalit writings are the voices to voiceless you number of uh, such instances you can find if you are reading uh, narendra jadhav's outcast a mem memoir uh, originally written in marathi where it's talking about me and my father and us and all you can see a great touch and the impact of ambedkarism in that how how it was a revolutionary text you can see when the number of dalits reading it they came to know about the, what is actually happening to society today we talk about mano samriti we talk about uh, that uh, varna system in hindu society how many are uh, i'm not just talking about dalits how many are the non dalits who know the exact uh, history behind that how it started how it has been exploited uh, for the personal interest by a number of people and the caste in the society uh, may not be the so many people are not aware of about it the dalit literature is a tool to express the personal anguish and pain resentment atrocities poverty and exploitations in its various forms like poems short stories and novels novels dalit writings and we the hidden face of the indian social system so moving ahead the sort of biographies why i do consider it voice of many voiceless people are hard stories of caste discrimination discrimination and uh, ill treatment in the society uh, this and missing i'm extremely sorry for this clerical mistake in writing it's and and providing dalits a platform to raise their voice against social discrimination voice of dalit authors are unifying millions of the dalits together maybe from any part of the country any state or any 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 region and the dalits self narratives are the significant tools of dalit consciousness if i'm talking about dalit consciousness now as a voice of voiceless when the other communities from the parts uh, what is happening to the dalits of some other uh, parts of the country other states somehow you feel that uh, they are somehow connected to each other so what is happening in my state similarly some of it is happening in other states also and today as uh, we were just uh, you know, during the previous uh, presenters presentation talking about about feminism so as that feel of feministing the uh, discrimination and in the society uh, only women can realize it how you feel painful when you are being uh, discriminated on the basis of your sex similarly i my part of saying is how dalit on the basis of his caste is discriminated that real pain only and only can be realized by a dalit you may be uh, sitting on a very high position uh, you may see uh, the example of old kash valmiki he worked in that ordinance factory uh, during his uh, government services on the other hand you may talk about narendra jadhav after getting a higher and higher rank in his profession but still when he was sitting over there at the last moment again that uh, Uh, thought comes in in mind so whatever i have done but still in the society i am being treated as a dalit you may be sitting on a very high chair so definitely providing dalits a platform to raise their voices against the social discrimination voices of dalit authors are unifying millions of dalits together and dalit self narratives are significant tool of dalit consciousness again and autobiographical rights has helped the literature to claim its place in the mainstream literature it is uh, what i feel is that dalit uh, autobiographies are today the most marketable genre of the dalit literature and literature of interest for not only for the dalits but for the non dalit also so quickly i'm concluding my presentation dalit writings are the voice of numerous marginalized communities and these writings especially autobiographical narratives are used as means of protest and the writings are treated as voice to voiceless because it has revealed the hidden face of independent india where the constitution guarantees equality and justice for all but the reality is exactly opposite to that maybe whatever the provision is made in our constitution but what is happening in ground you may see the number of news number of reports these days and uh, uh, i can still remember i think it happened two months back in a government school a boy studying in just fourth class he belonged to a dalit community he dared to drink a glass of water from principals uh, that tumbler and he was thrashed and he died there and 
after uh, some time. So can you just realize how painful it is that the, just a boy was beaten to death just because he dared to drink a water from uh, a teacher from the higher caste? Then we are talking about uh, that uh, provision of justice and equality on the constitutional basis. So thus it can be concluded by saying that the different forms of Dalit writings not only have power to attract the curiosity of Dalit readers, but Dalit authors, but also today, it has become a subject of great interest to research for the non-Dalits readers, authors and research scholars and uh, everybody. So with this, I end, uh, I hope, uh, am I audible now? Hello. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, so I like, uh, yeah. Yeah, ma'am, please. So, I like uh, Punjabi and uh, Marathi uh, Dalit writers. So, we do have a famous uh, autobiography, uh, female writer in Tamil also. Uh, you might have uh, known, well, well known personality, Bama. Yeah, yeah, yes, obviously, man. Obviously, I have referred her in my research work also. Yeah. The number of female writers. Karuk. Karuk. That was his uh, first autobiography also. It's a subaltern yeah. writing too. Gee. It is also about an uh, Christian. Actually, it is a Christian Dalit woman uh, hmm. uh, who realizes uh, that her identity as a Christianity, as a Christian, uh, she is yeah heavily mediated by her identity as a dalit and that she must fight mm -hmm. the discriminatory practices both within the church and also outside also thank you so that uh, so it is a really autobiography and also mm -hmm. um you might have heard about more about a it was a translated piece also translated in english also yeah yeah very true uh, Participants, do you have any? So, thank you. In fact, ma'am, see, we are talking about because the topic is about studies. See, even uh, I'm very much sure, I'm damn sure about it. There may be number of uh, research scholars, number of students studying in different universities okay. and uh, working on a different higher positions. But why? Why? Still, they are afraid of uh, revealing their identity in the society. Can we realize that uh, real? Uh, what is the reason behind that? Uh, let me share with everybody. I am working as principal of uh, Sanic School in Himachal Pradesh, and uh, I do belong to the Dalit community. Okay, but I never, never, I never ever hidden my identity to someone else, from someone else. Because what happened in the society, let's say I'm talking to a stranger, he is also on equal equivalent post to me. He regards you, everything he is very much honorable towards you. But as your identity is revealed that uh, he, you are being uh, treated as, as inferior after that, why so? Your education, uh, your qualification, your accomplishment, it hardly matters. That matters uh, on the top is your caste. Mm -hmm. Do you? So, yes, of course. Uh, I, I do request if there's uh, students, research scholars like me, we must dare to reveal your identity. You are doing a great job for your communities. Uh, if you really want uh, that uh, independence and that uh, to bring, bring up your communities, so if you are hiding behind uh, the curtains, so I don't feel there's any purpose and uh, accomplishment of your research work. You are just doing it for the sake of your degrees, nothing else. <laughs> maybe may, you, uh, not for the sake of the degree uh, maybe uh, uh, many social groups many studies many critics may more um, most of them are arguing to exclude yeah. from to dominant power structure actually mm. right exactly exclude from dominant power structure uh, let us see uh, th that is what uh, earlier i said so miles to go so let us see exactly okay. but Thanks. it's not it's not ma'am as as uh, i read in uh, these autobiographies uh, most of these authors they written it's never never easy mm -hmm. to raise your voice if you belong to such community you it means uh, you are going to have a bar in the society so it's a daring daring task definitely mm -hmm. thank you very much thank you thank you
Uh, next, our next presenter is uh, Ashwin. Are you ready? Ashwin? Okay. Ashwin, are you there? Sorry, Ashwini. Hello. Hello. Ashwini. Ma'am, actually, Ashwini is there. Yeah, Ashwini is there, but Ashwini. Poonam Patel, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Ashwini, yeah, okay, ma'am. Okay. I'm here. Okay, okay. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, let's start yes, with Ashwini now. Yes, yes. Ashwini, you are me? you ready? It's audible. Ma'am, hope I'm audible. You're audible. You're yes, audible. Hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You're audible. You can start your presentation now. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can you hear me? You're audible, ma'am. You can start your presentation now. Yes, you are audible. I hope I am audible now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. This is Ashwini. I'm working as an assistant professor of English in Bhaktavasal Memorial College for Women. Chennai. My research paper is titled as Sivagami's Unmaiku Munnum Pinnum, a narrative of protest and identity relation. So I've uh, made this presentation as uh, in this way, as I've chosen for this paper and the summary of the novel, and I'll present the argument of the alluded. Here with what is Dalit, okay? The definite Dalit writers, most of them, they don't want to uh, identify themselves as Dalit. Because, see, when a Dalit writer, when he writes about something, why it is regarded as 
Dalit literature. So this is the question of uh, most of the Dalit literature, I mean Dalit writers. And uh, as everyone said earlier, it started in Maharashtra. Dalit writing started in Maharashtra and it spread to other uh, states in uh, India. The most important point in Dalit literature is the Ambedkar Centenary Celebration. So many scholars, activists, they have uh, invited to this conference. From there, new writers have emerged. New writers have started uh, writing about their experience. So we have novels, short stories, poems, drama, essays, autobiographies, memorials in Dalit literature. Okay. Usually Dalit literature is, discusses about uh, caste issues. It's the predominant theme, but Dalit writers, they do not stop just by discussing about caste issues. They also discuss about the issues in the society. They also uh, bring the theme of uh, nature in their writings. So that's about like that is literature. And apart from that, the narrative style of the writers, each one have their own way of telling their story. Uh, they have their own of uh, narrating the stories. So the narrative style in Dalit literature should be good important. Then coming to the author. She is Sivakami. Most of her, she is very famous in uh, Tamil literary circle. And she was born on 30th November 1957 in Tamil Nadu. And she was an IAS officer, Dalit feminist, activist, and politician. She has written six novels and more than 60 short stories. She also written a number of critical essays as well. A writing career has started when she was a student. Her first work was Parayana Karidalum. It was uh, written in Tamil and she also translated it, uh, it in English as uh, The Grip of Change. So, about the novel that I've chosen for uh, this paper, it's Unmaikku Munnum Pinnum. It was originally published in 2012 and it is, comes under uh, the journal novel and it was written in Tamil. It is not yet translated into English yet and it has 37 chapters. So, uh, you know, a brief summary of the novel would be helpful in understanding. Uh, my discussion. So what the novel is about the novel Unmaikku Munnum Pinnum. So we can translate uh, the translate it as uh, truth, the life of Neela. So Neela is the character in the novel and she is the protagonist as well as the narrator of this novel. And Neela is an IAS officer in the novel. So we'll see what happens next. She fights for the underprivileged people. She uh, conducts uh, meetings, she, ar she arranges uh, workshops, and she educates a lot of uh, underprivileged people. She not only educates uh, Dalits, she also educates uh, and gives awareness to transgenders, tribes, and landless people. So in this novel, when we read this novel, we come to know about how uh, you know, Dalit movements have emerged after the 1990s. Coming to the argument of the paper, this paper presents how narrative is being used as a weapon in the novel. The novel is a narrative of protest in two ways. Firstly, the novel talks about how many movements So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we come to know about many movements, Dalit movements in this novel. As well as the writings of the character act as a protest against the ruling class, the character Neela here. Her writing, it acts and it shows how, the, how she's been done. Dominated. Though she's a, she's an IAS officer, how she's been dominated in her own circle. So that we'll see in this novel. And then uh, not only the cat, so the protest is being, um, you not know, shown the reader. Coming to the vision of the fiction is nothing but 
autobiographical fiction autobiography and fiction so it is a mixture of or combination of author life was blended with fictional information shivakami she is an ias officer the character evident that it's an autobiographical fiction yes so here um, in the north well the author captures our experience and tells it to the reader to through the character neela so usually the cat character is is not talking here it is the writer the author that is p sivagami she is talking through the character of neela in this novel so neela is projected as a woman who fight for equality in the government office uh, to meet the you know officer the reason is uh, she has been waiting list uh, she was working in ias officer she the reason for her uh, so is organizing lots of movements as i said earlier she she is organizing lots of movements and um, you know uh, awareness program the government thought that neela is working mm-hmm. against the government so they have suspended her of course the novel talks about equality equality in the terms of gender class and caste though uh, the character neela she is an ias officer she is not given equality because she is from a lower caste that is she is a dalit that too from dalit she is a woman so dalit women they always faces the dual identity okay and here writing act as a powerful tool to express herself neela she not only conduct thing the movements or she is not only participating in the movement she is not only uh, giving speeches in the uh, program but she also writes she contributes enormously to the monthly magazine she runs her own uh, magazine itself in the novel conducting meeting for the underprivileged bring a sense of so uh, conducting meetings like this for the truth is very important the government do not know what she is actually doing so the truth is being present here as i told earlier the nature of the government the nature of the government is always in different towards um, neela they are uh, you know though she she's been in um, higher position she is not given uh, what can i say not given proper treatment when she get lot of response from public as well even very important because the thing is uh, she has divided in to the divided the novel into 37 chapters in each chapter she describes about and uh, each event the narrative uh, the way in which she, she tells the story that is very important as a reader as a researcher the narrative should be given more importance and coming to the significance of the title unmai kur suspension and after suspension so that uh, that uh, no it needs a close reading the title neela the character she is from a dalit background and she has become an ia officer uh, though she became uh, becomes an officer uh, you know she doesn't get that kind of um,
what can I say? She doesn't get she's not recognized. She's not properly recognized in the government. Through our writing, she's created creating her identity. She's gaining her identity, not only the character Neela. The writer also, she is gaining her identity through writing. So the paper concludes how writing, I mean, how Dalit writing move beyond the mourning of the past and the protest through writing. So usually when we take Dalit literature, uh, even in, the, in our previous discussion also, we said Dalit writing, it always talks about their, uh, you know, sufferings. And mourning. So it is not, uh, we cannot conclude Dalit writer, uh, Dalit literature with this frame, right? We should widen our um, thoughts and we should and we should look at writing from various perspectives. So a protest Of course, the narrator is acting as a protest here. The land. And wait. True language, the writer is carrying out the theme of protest in this novel. Ma'am, can you hear me now? Hello. Ah, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. In between the there was some of a technical problem. Some sort of technical problem we okay. experienced. Okay. I, mm -hmm. Anyways, it was a nice presentation. So uh, okay, so actually uh, so that is writing is a common, uh, mm -hmm. common common thing. So but Dalit literature is actually uh, is to deconstruct the orthodox. Uh, not only uh, deconstructing the yes, conservation, yes. Uh, uh, conservative and uh, reactionary mentality, actually. So, due to dissimilarity, yes, particularly yes. in circumstances, those things are emphasizing the mm. domin uh, domination. But after the postmodernism, yes. government is expecting a fair society. Okay. Uh, yes. Even now, yes. uh, they are supporting a lot where humans would be on the same ground, irrespective of their caste and color. Um, yes. uh, so even uh, why I'm saying this is even in my college, in my department, there mm. was a girl who all over come from mm. Marayuri. You may have all known about this place on the way mm -hmm. to Muna, near to Udmal Petri. 
so uh, she mm-hmm. couldn't serve uh, serve here because she herself felt like alienated and suppressed that maybe because of their complex aha uh-huh. we all uh, educated her uh, we gave uh, like um, so many advices uh, so many support to her but still um, uh, she could not change her uh, mind mm-hmm. okay because might be mm. that maybe because of the complex so when it could be changed only by education right from primary yes yes true very also, true yeah and also they are not ready to live in plains also aha uh-huh. uh, plain area they are uh, they are not they are not coming forward first of all mm-hmm. men they are not ready to come out uh, even yes. our social work department they have toiled much to take care uh, take care of them Uh, particularly mm. during the medical emergency mm-hmm. uh, so they should first cooperate with us uh, also to lift them up yes what do you say true ma'am yeah they should cooperate with us definitely yes and yes, only yes. we can give uh, we can give and also we can care them even government can support them yes yes yeah yes ma'am thank you ashwini thank you ma'am thank you so much पूनम पूनम पटेल आई देयर यस 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 मैम यू कैन स्टार्ट नाउ हट या Uh, my screen is visible ma'am hello yes ma'am yes it's visible uh, yeah okay so good morning everyone good morning chairperson and all the intellectual present here my name is poonam patel uh, and i'm serving as a lecturer in pillai to see college of engineering and technology in navi mumbai thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to present my topic exploring the sensational image of a women in shobha days second thought I would like to begin my topic my presentation with a quote You like you look like a beautiful garden today this is a quote from second thoughts written by Shobha Dev it this particular uh, quote it celebrates and cherish women's beauty and it appreciate women's beauty in modern era women is you know seen as equal as men making lot of advancement in all the walks of life but underneath this colorful picture of colorful image of a women there is a dark truth hidden behind we all live in the 21st century yet the status of a women in the patriarchal society of india is marginalized and objectified a lot women are conquering the globe with their achievements in every field yet a patriarchal system is deeply rooted no matter whether the women belongs to an urban society or rural area she is rich poor elite class affluent class doesn't matter injustice violence and discrimination it continues against the women in the contemporary society as well many women many indian writer uh, novelist have voiced their uh, opinion against the prevailing women issues in their novel women like uh, anita desai samla das amrita pritam they all have presented and touched frank opinion Uh, on both the urban as well as traditional women situation shobha day is one such eminent writer who has dealt in the sexual subaltern issues of women suffering patriarchal hegemony marginalization exploitation violence and abuse both emotionally as well as physically at the hands of male dominated society she is called jackie pauline of india mainly she focuses on the pathetic conditions of ultra modern middle class women projecting complexity in relationship failure of marriage institution and lack of freedom and satisfactions in their life a novel like starry nights a socialite evening snapshot sultry days and second thought powerfully takes the society through a psychic of a woman who suffers subjugations in a so called modern society all her female characters are modern educated they are literate 
making all the efforts to rebel, revolt, and refuse the patriarchal, do uh, patriarchal dominance, which is still prevalent in our society. My paper is going to attempt uh, an undeveloped sensational image of a modern Indian married women and this projection of metamorphosis, transformation of traditional silent sufferers to a rebellious, free, frank, and aspiring women. The paper will also explore the character Maya in Shobha Day's novel, Second Thought, that is published in 1996. This paper revolves around three main aspects of the novel, wherein I'll be discussing about the theme of identity crisis and existence issue, women's struggle for existence. Second, the transformation of women's image as a result of subjugations and patriarchal dominance. And lastly, the self-realization of the protagonist to redefine the traditional set of moral values and expressing uh, expressing to redesign and you know enjoy their rights, social status with the men. Now, coming to the novel, second thought. We know that marriage is a bond, a loving relationship between a man and women. But in the second thought, this projection of Maya, the protagonist, as a silent sufferer of, you know, both ethically and spiritually, uh, is collapsed in the modern society. Maya here is married to Ranjan and is in ignored. She is tortured. She is subjugated by her husband. Maya is stuck and suffocated by the restrictions of her arranged marriage to a man who is traditional and disinterested in her emotional as well as physical needs and desire. She, uh, she marries a man just as uh, she uh, Ranjan marries a ma marries uh, Maya just for the sake of her mother to you know, complete the household responsibility and domestic core. Her dreams to live a lavish life in Mumbai is shattered. And she feels isolated, leading her to fulfill her desire with the another man outside the marriage called Nikhil. Nikhil is a neighbor who satisfies her needs. She falls in love with him, but eventually leads to disappointment due to Nikhil's betrayal. Her illicit relationship with Nikhil is due to her mental abuse and agonies that is inflicted upon her by her husband, Ranjan. The novel reflects the psychological and social economical dynamics of middle class society. Her revolt against her husband and slipping into an extramarital affair is a sign of transformation, shifting power dynamics that a man can never accept. In shooting from the hip, selected writings by Shubhade, they says that eventually every relationship is a power struggle either on an overt or sublime level. Let us see the identity and existence crisis, which is faced by Maya in the novel. Maya feels trapped in matrimony. She feels like a full-time household maid, a full-time unpaid maid servant to Ranjan and his mother, where she makes an attempt for her self-identity and existence. The relationship of Maya with Ranjan has no substance and it is completely hollow. We can see that Ranjan's advice to Maya in uh, uh, in one instance to follow his mother's footsteps uh, is an example of a patriarchal society, which is deeply rooted. His restrictions for her to use STD or not to use STD phones and televisions or even air conditions or even to pursue her career has a major impact on her identity. Ranjan and his uncle, Mr. Malik, talks about Maya's parents with disrespect. Here, Mr. Malik is a product of patriarchal society and is of the opinion that in any Indian family, husband's comfort comes first, as he stated in the novel. Even in women's writer in 20th century literature, Monica Gupta says, the experience of the literature writers world over has focused around women, particularly the issue of identity, alienation, and separation. Similarly, in the second thought, we can see it is portrayed that the struggle of Indian women, uh, they suffer sufferings and isolation, insult, abuse, and subjugations at the hands of Indian men. In one instance, Ranjan calls Maya nipomanic and turns her sexual desire as if turns down her sexual desire as if she is an object. She is not made up of uh, flesh, blood, feelings, or desire. Thus, Maya continues her search for identity and respect in her married life. 
now let us see the transformation uh which is uh, which is because of the uh, circumstances the situation that is the injustice that is uh, inflicted because of patriarchal society that leads to a transformation of a image from a silent sufferer to someone who is bold and fearless in this situation of total despair and depression and you know because of the perplexed mindset maya is pleased with nikhil and she enjoys his company she sings she laughs she liberates with nikhil maya is a way in a way rebels against her husband and his ignorance she let herself fly with nikhil and as the title rightly suggests she gives herself a second chance a second thought nikhil's character here liberates and transforms her image into free bold soul she denies to surrender the surrender at the cold demeanor of her husband days women character seeks to you no know, get happiness freedom and right to seek pleasures at all cost maya though was having satisfaction with nikhil she was also guilty about deceiving her husband but on the other hand she says in the novel that going outside and breathing fresh air is not at all a scene here she believes that you no know, making asking for rights or seeking for happiness is not at all seen and she can do it so this suppresses her guilt at a particular point to some extent her image is transformed into a audacious admired and fearless entity from a silent sufferer to emancipation as a bold victor personality these women characters are emotional and sensitive but simultaneously they are brave enough to rebel revolt and accept and realize the truth as the novel proceeds maya discovers her own identity with nikhil she discovers pleasure and ecstasy of physical intimacy she was emotionally invested but ultimately she was exploited by nikhil this also reveals the nature of men in our society they treat women as an object to satisfy their need to satisfy their demands nikhil betrays her and exploits her for his sexual pleasure she she is just a lonely married woman on his list to satisfy his desire but never had an intention to marry her or to keep her happy for a life long time maya is portrayed as a victim of a patriarchal society even if she tries to break the fetter of the mute victim she is victorious for short span of time but accepts and realizes the terrible reality of her fate that she is left with no choice but to endure her life in loneliness with ranjan on the other hand she has ranjan's impotency and on the other hand she is betrayed by her husband uh, by her lover that puts an end to her desire to conclude Shobha Day presents a masterpiece and sheds some light on the urban Indian women's suffering, the emancipation of weak, dependent, and suppressed wife to a totally free and liberated woman who protests against her husband and rejects his slavery to a large extent. She goes against existing norms and she continues to indulge in indulge in uh, physical act, uh, physical uh, desires, sexual activities with Nikhil, um, unless and until Nikhil gets married. she realizes that nikhil is getting married she again liberate again liberate herself from the clutches and returns to her husband an example of uh, maya is an example of victim to victor who represents women suffering humiliation suppression and exploitation in the male dominated society to end maya attempts to live life on her own terms women's of day novel comes with flying colors transforming themselves with self assertiveness carefreeness and confidence challenging male domination in their own sensational way enjoying status of the new women new modern women indeed thank you so much hello am i audible Yes, ma'am. You're audible, ma'am. Shubha, ma'am. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, that is a uh, yes. I said earlier that is uh, this era has been this era has been declared as no feminism. Right. Ah, uh, but still we are experiencing even in workplaces particularly. Yeah. 
so to conclude this actually give uh, this is to advocate that everyone should involve themselves and should actively participate to demand their rights so not but, only dalit women or uh, uh, other uh, whoever it is so right. everyone should actively participate and they should demand for their own rights correct one uh, one thing that it is not about feminism it is about humanism like first uh, we yeah. or everybody needs to be treated as a human first whether it is emotion or uh, you know in the workplace uh, this distinct uh, this division uh, human i mean human or feminism or male or female white black this distinct i mean this differences must be eliminated and that can be through education i feel for both men and women yes ma'am uh, of course of course the current uh, example which i can remember is was a me too movement okay it was uh, it was really strong uh, you know a revolt against uh, this patriarchal society which is still prevailing somewhere in the mind and that needs to be educated and you know changed it it, it needs a transformation right from the scratch from the basic through education i feel yes of course ma'am of course only through education we can change we can bring changes of right. course so not only this uh, feminism and all even the dalit the dalit literature it has been uh, progressed as a key literary branch now so it has Correct. given a rise to many revolutionary issues in a dalit community not only um in uh, even uh, this has brought a, a new kind of woke up in everyone's consciousness now yes. in ma maximum universities and in many colleges they uh, they already they have uh, uh, they uh, set up a separate branch for this uh, literature too so it has to broaden the marginal so if right. we judge not uh, not if we judge not on the aesthetic aspects it is merely impossible instead mm -hmm. everyone should take a sincere and authentic effort based on their own consideration that is what i believe genuinely i'm true so true even, then only genuinely we can bring a lot many changes even in the society ma'am right right ma'am so correct thank you thank you very much thank you for all the participants thank you maha ma'am Thank, thank you. you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for spending you. your valuable time uh, with thank us. You. And also, you have shared your, your uh, beautiful ideas and opinions uh, towards the presenters' uh, uh, titles. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Once again, I thank all the participants for their valuable effort. Thank you, thank you all.